appeared as circles on either side of the planet. When he looked again in 1612, the circles were gone. Galileo was baffled, but the answer to this mystery is obvious to modern astronomers. Galileo didn't see these protrusions the second year because at that time, Saturn's rings were nearly edge on to his line of sight, and so they were essentially invisible. An edge on view occurs twice in the 30 years it takes Saturn to orbit the Sun. The angle at which the rings are seen is constantly changing because the planet itself tilts 27 degrees. So this is a Saturn and is a tilted 27 degree, so it's facing me. I can see the rings from above. Saturn moves, so now it is here. And I could see the rings in profile as a straight thin line. Then it moves on the other side and you can see the ring from down below. While Galileo's mystery was swiftly resolved by later ring hunters, one of the most fundamental questions about Saturn is hotly debated to this day. Where did the rings come from? It's the biggest conundrum in ring science, really, the origin of Saturn's rings. Two theories vie for dominance. One holds that the rings formed just after the birth of Saturn, four and a half billion years ago. They were the leftovers from the spinning disk of material that became the planet. The second theory puts their age at just 100 million years, a relative newborn. If the dinosaurs had telescopes and looked up at Saturn, there might not have been a ring system there. It's probably much newer than that, but we happen to be the lucky ones that the rings are there at the same time that we have the technology to explore them. The belief is Saturn's rings were created by a cataclysmic event. But was it a massive collision between a moon and an asteroid? Or an invisible force that ripped a moon into billions of pieces? They are some of the most awe-inspiring structures in the solar system. Wider than 22 Earths, while only 30 feet thick, but the biggest mystery facing ring hunters is how Saturn's rings got there. Many believe that the rings were born when one of Saturn's moons was ripped to millions or billions of pieces by a powerful force called tidal effect. effect is any gravitational interaction where one side is getting tugged on more than the other side. So if I had a big massive object right here closer to this shoulder, it would pull more on this shoulder than this one, which is further away, and it could pull me apart. In a black hole where gravity is violently strong, tidal effect could pull apart something as small as a human. If you've heard the phrase spaghettification, Black holes pulling on your feet more than your head, and it's stretching you out into a long strand of spaghetti. In less extreme places, like our solar system, the impact of tidal effect is only felt by large bodies like planets and moons. Anyone who has gone to the seashore has witnessed the moon's tidal effect on the Earth. The part of the Earth that's nearest to the moon gets pulled more strongly toward the moon than the far side of the Earth. So the Earth takes on this bulgy appearance, so you can see at the shore that the water goes up and down over a roughly 12-hour period. But the moon's tidal effect doesn't only pull the oceans, it pulls the entire planet. Something that's not often recognized is that the rock ball of the planet itself changes shape as well. In fact, Earth's diameter in the direction toward the moon is a foot or two longer than the diameter in the perpendicular direction because the whole Earth is stretched toward and away from the moon. Planets also have a tidal effect on their moons. In fact, since planets are larger than moons, they have more gravity and create stronger tidal effects. 
Our moon is made of rock and metals, far too solid to be ripped apart by Earth's tidal effect. But some of Saturn's moons were loose conglomerations of ice, dust, and rock, sometimes called rubble piles. A rubble pile might be like a snow cone or something like this, you know, it's put together with no strength except just little surface forces, so a very, very low strength object. Some scientists believe one of these moons strayed too close to Saturn 100 million years ago. The loosely held moon would get ripped apart into thousands or millions of pieces of a wide range of sizes. And they would have different distances from the planet and thus would take on different orbits. The different periods of the different orbits would gradually spread the stuff out into a ring system. Only further exploration can determine whether the rings of Saturn were created by tidal effect, the destruction of a moon by an asteroid, or from leftover debris when the planet first formed. But astronomers recently discovered particles joining a ring right before their eyes. They found that Saturn's outermost band, the E-ring, only exists because of violent upheavals on one of Saturn's moons called Enceladus. What erupts from this extraordinary moon is water. That water squirts out in geysers and instantly freezes kind of like the water in snowmaking machines at ski resorts. These plumes of frozen particles shoot hundreds of miles off the surface of the moon, where they enter into orbit around Saturn and form the E-ring. Besides the unexpected thrill of seeing material added to one of Saturn's rings, Astronomers discovered another surprise locked within the microscopic particles of the E-ring. In June 2009, scientists found trace elements of chemicals commonly known as salt and baking soda. The thing that's so exciting about finding both the salt and the carbonates in the E-ring is that those are the kinds of things that suggest a liquid ocean inside of Enceladus. And just like on Earth, where life formed in the oceans, we believe, it could very well be true that life is formed inside of Enceladus. This is a really exciting possibility, but it's by no means solved because we don't see the sodium in the plume coming out. These observations suggest some other explanations. We don't know, we have to keep exploring. Astronomers are in fact getting streams of new data on Saturn and its rings every day from a spacecraft launched in 1997 called Cassini. Cassini is about as big as a small school bus. It's the biggest interplanetary spacecraft NASA has ever built. After a seven-year journey, Cassini became the first spacecraft to enter into an orbit around Saturn giving mankind a front row seat to the sixth planet from the sun and its rings. Already it's gone over 100 times around Saturn. By the end of the mission, it'll probably have gone around Saturn 200 times. Cassini has captured images closer than ever before, revealing a wild world of shifting forms and surprising variation. From a distance, it almost looks like the rings are a solid body, you know, just a sort of stately march around the planet. But it's not that way at all. It's a very chaotic, uh, messy process. Studying rings used to feel like we were studying geology, and now it feels more like we're studying the weather. To the astonishment of astronomers, Cassini revealed particles in one ring forming a towering wave. First seen in 2009, the wave rose at the edge of a ring to the terrifying height of more than a mile. The rings themselves are very thin, only about 30 feet, so it's as though you were on a, a shallow lake only 30 feet deep, and then a mile-high wave comes right at you. It's, it's really remarkable. The cause of this planetary surf turned out to be the gravitational effects from a moon just five miles wide, named Daphnis. 